Of course, I mean, every job he does, we're taking more than that. Skinny bloke. Are we in? We're in. Alright. Three, two, one. G'day, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Melbourne Pro Punters panel. As usual, Darren Potter. Juppy. Returning guest. Matt Welsh. Thanks, Hello, Matt. Mate. Matt Welsh. Thank you. The Cheers. modern punter, as opposed to a couple of old scrubbers like us, Juppy. Oh, I'd, I'd have to be move up the food chain a bit to be a scrubber, Paul. <laughs> um, as you can see, we're back here in the Undercroft at Flemington. Um, coming off, we're in, in between the two Flemington, meet, two Flemington Saturday meetings. Um, it was, I know from a work perspective, I worked here in the Undercroft, it was very poor here last week, so not expecting a big improvement this week, but uh, the track was a little bit funny on Saturday, boys. Uh, I think so, all, so what, was the, what was the problem here? Just no, no crowd? There was no one here. Just no. No, no one here? We wrote uh, 70 tickets for the day. Mm. Wow. And the, the bookmaker you're working for, do they do yeah. much over the phones? Nope. No, so that's... No. What you're sort of left to do in that situation is, is you wind up doing a bit more on bed fit. Yeah. And right. laying, laying the ones that you can't put in on there. I so. think wagering-wise, last week was a pretty quiet day because... It was the first Flemington meeting since the carnival, so that quite a gap, and there was very little Flemington form to work with, so that tends to keep the big teams a bit quiet. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just was a pretty. I, mean, I think it'll be a decent sort of a form meeting. I can't remember the, how the races stood up on the ratings point of view. I know Snoopy was the best of the day, but it was the strongest race of the day too, so so it should have been. But um, yeah, I think that race will prove useful as a that meeting will prove useful over the next month or two. I reckon, mm. I reckon the one of Lloyd's... Um, Gathland? Yeah, I think it's one to follow because it comes out of that... It had it tried against Gallup Chieftain, didn't yeah, it? Correct. Yeah, and uh, I think he's a pretty decent horse. So yeah, there's a couple there that go on forward over the next few weeks, maybe the Baggett or something like that. Mm. Well, there's a race this Saturday, Juppie. Yeah. A 2,000 metre race. It's got 17 acceptors. Half of them from Weir and Walla combined. Okay. So I think between Weir and Walla, they've got eight of the runners. But it's an amazingly strong race. There's at least, um, I would say, half a dozen runners in that race that I was looking for at their next run. So, you know, they're going to be hard to get all of them in there. Might have even been a horse of... Ralph, get the pit, Ralphie made get the picture. Oh, of yeah, he did too, yeah. It's in there and it doesn't look an easy race for it to win. But, you know, horses like um, Gallic Chieftain that you just mentioned, Flying Light. It's just a really... Um, it's an intriguing race. I did the speed map for it this morning and it's a really hard race to map. It's a very dense map where the jockey intent and decisions they make early are going to have a real impact on that race and how they shape up. So now, you, bo race. you boys follow it pretty closely. Are we getting to the stage now where the summer form's starting to even out a little bit and we've got over that post spring where the form was a little bit all over the place for a couple of weeks and we're starting to get... We're getting over yeah. it, Juppie. We need, we need another couple of weeks and it'll really come solid. But... Um, as, as you saw yesterday, Jumper, they ran pretty true at Mornington yesterday, yeah. that little meeting. And um, so there's the signs of making our way through the turbulence are there. Are there. So we're um, And those uh, summer trainers that we saw yeah. last year come to the fore, Robbie Griffiths, yeah, Ella Zara. Zara, you know, they're starting to produce winners. And, and once again, it looks like they're in for a big summer period. Yes, I'd agree with that. And I think the big stables just roll on. Yeah, well, they're just we're, machines, we're, we're aren't teams, they? going to keep winning stacks of races and Hayes and Davenick are going as good as they go. At the yeah, moment. Uh, unearthed a very good two year old on Friday night I think. Yes. I think was a, oh yeah, yeah, the one in the um, red and white colours. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, is it catchy, catchy or something? Catchy, catchy, catchy yeah. Catchy. yeah. Um, rails out nine metres for Saturday's meetings here. We haven't walked the track yet, but uh, at least you'll be able to walk the track pots. <laughs> yeah, we'll be able to have a walk around here. Well, and as, as, people will know, as, as viewers will know from last week, I went out and had a look at the uh, track last Thursday and we, both on the podcast and on this show, we yeah. mentioned a few things. But I come back for a second look on Friday and things had completely changed. So we've got to be a bit careful with Mick Woody this time of year because he, he does like to do everything he can to prevent, present a, as even a playing field as, he, as possible. So we'll be having a walk of the track after we do the show today. Hopefully we'll run into Mick on our way round. If not, I'll have to come back tomorrow and have a second look. But um, yeah, interesting, um, interesting circumstances here Saturday with the rail out nine metres, which gets us puts the uh, irrigation lanes, which are really from about the 12 metre mark to the 16 metre mark, yep. right in play. 
but at least you'll be able to walk a pot. Yeah, you'll yeah. have unfettered access. Unfettered unlike access. what you had on Sunday at like. Well, I'm, I drove down even... to Mornington on Tuesday, Juppy. Oh, you'd be able to walk into the joint. I was a bit nervous. I was thinking, because <laughs> I hope word hasn't spread and I'm on the bar list. There's a photo of me or something. Do not let this bloke on your track. Or... The, the, the thing with Mornington is, pods is harder to get. It's harder to get out of than it is to get into. It's <laughs> well, the hardest I joint the to get track out there of. And I, I walk straight into uh, Michael Suey. Ch- uh, yep, chop, chop yeah, Suey. Yeah, Suey. Which I didn't know that nickname. I wish I had it when I met him. But, um, Shout out to Michael and his offsider, I think, was Aiden. I'm not sure about that, but um, they were only too happy to stop and have a chat to me. Provided me with some great info. Um, I had a good walk around the track. They came around and pulled up again and asked me what I thought. I even gave them a tip. Unfortunately, it was uh, say Edda or whatever. <laughs> one it was of, one of the few that didn't win yesterday. That, uh, got uh, nosed out, but I did say have something on schooner. So hopefully they had something on schooner. And. Um, it was a it was an intriguing track to walk, and, and that's the way it should be. It was it was a really as as has been my experience yep. with almost all the track managers at all the clubs. They're very welcoming. Yep. They want you to walk the track. They want good information to get out into the marketplace. Um, they hate it when people write stuff about the track when they don't when they're almost guessing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's and it becomes misinformation. That's what the track managers really hate. So I mean all. I'm just giving, saying all that background because it was it was a real shock when I got the Werribee last week and um, and that they made that unusual decision to not allow me to walk go onto the track. So, so the reasons that they may have been uncomfortable about you walking, obviously potentially security concern. Yeah. Um, you know they'd be worried about people coming onto the track, potentially dropping something on the track. You know, to my mind. Um, these clubs need to be encouraging people to walk tracks. I mean, you're not going to suddenly have 30,000 people come and walk the track because, you know, the track managers say, come on down. What you're going to have is a group of punters who are far more informed by someone like you, your subscribers. Your subscribers probably had, I imagine, less of a bet on Sunday as a result of what happened. Um, And that affects wagering turnover. That affects everyone in the industry. Everyone relies on wagering turnover and we're, seeing a, a stream of incidents occur that, that are discouraging wagering turnover. And to my mind, there needs to be an industry-wide um, stance on track walking that is across all the tracks in Victoria that we encourage that and, yeah, well, and we welcome the I think they do. Yeah, and they do. I think they do. They I think do. there's just they one do. case of Werribee. So I think the, the, the particulars that led to the what, what happened last week were, A, it's a quarantine centre. Mm. Okay, so it's got a high fence, I'm guessing it's probably an eight foot fence yeah, yeah, yeah. with barbed wire yeah. on the top mm. because it's a quarantine centre. Now, nearly, nearly every other track in the state, particularly if you go the, there the day before the meeting, oh, but even, even on race day, yeah. there are so many points of entry into a course, they couldn't stop you going on it even yeah. if they wanted to, right? Yeah. So, um, Werribee has that situation on its own. Yeah. And then it was actually, the, it was their cup day and patrons had started coming in so it was just it was a bit of an unusual circumstance but like i mean i would have gone there on saturday to walk the track but um i'm sorry there was a race meeting at flemington last saturday that sort of had me a bit occupied yeah. so um look it was a unfortunate set of circumstances i did give the guy on the on the gate who'd come back and delivered a message to me from the powers that being the, and the track manager that they weren't going to allow me onto the track that it was a foolish decision and that they would regret it because you know what, and the first thing I want to say, or I should have, the first thing I should have said was, Jappy, we've got some fantastic followers. Yeah. They're all particularly you and Ralphie have. Yeah. And um, not only are they knowledgeable, yeah. but some of them are bloody funny. Correct. Like I, oh, Shane Adair's I mean, post was, that Shane was the Adair, best. Yeah, the, Shane Adair, outstanding Shane. Yeah. Um, whoever said best walker since Adam Gilchrist, very funny. <laughs> uh, it was just some rippers. It was just the whole thing was very funny. So, can I just um, pass my appreciation to all those um, got followers that joined in and, and had something to say? Um, it was really good, and particularly, particular thanks to Mike Simons who didn't have to get involved. But I mean, Caulfield's um, Caulfield are outstanding. I mean, they absolutely want good information to get out. Yeah. Um, there, there are always people walking around Caulfield, not just for track walking purposes. It's Crown Land. It's, it's a park. Land. Yeah. 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 Park, people walking yeah. their dogs and things like that. So um, uh, that that was great. And just I just want to respond just quickly. I don't want to get too bogged down in any of the um, nonsense of it. But uh, Richard Freeman was going on about I'd go and try and inspect the MCG on, yeah, the, the on, hangar. Yeah, on Boxing mean, Day. Can I say, Richard? So there's a test match starting today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So the cricket powers that be, they provide their um, viewers and supporters and punters. If you know, yeah. I know it's less of a punting issue for them, but it whatever, be. with unbelievable comprehensive information yeah. on the pitch. Okay, no one would want to go out there, Richard, and inspect the pitch because there's no need for them. No, exactly. You can get any bit of information you want on the pitch by just watching TV. Now, if if the um, track managers provided a track report or a pitch report like they do at cricket, I wouldn't need to walk the tracks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that, I mean, that's asking a lot. It's a bit different, you know what I mean? Like the track's 2,000 metres round and it'll take an hour. So then, I mean, I'm not saying that they should be doing that. I'm just saying that one of the reasons you walk the track in, in, in racing is because that's the only way you can really get that intimate mm. information. Yeah. Whereas in cricket, you get it in spades. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? So I do, it was such a nonsensical comparison. And Richard, the problem with you is, mate, that you don't really bet. So you don't really understand people that bet. Now this show, we're about punters here. We're pro punters, aren't we, Juppie? That's what we're calling. We so, so we do care about punters. We do care about betting. And that's why we thought it was a bit of a short-sighted decision not to allow someone who wanted to encourage punting onto the track. Sorry, I've just Jeffy. got a few points here. Richard, for starters, let's compare apples with apples, not apples and oranges. As most people would know, I was here for, I was here at six o'clock every day, every morning during the carnival. Up until about 10 o'clock, if you asked, you could have walked the Flemington track and plenty took advantage of it. Mm. There was one stage there at about 9.30 on and Derby that's Day. The, that's when the first race about midday. Correct. Where, whereas at Werribee, so we're, we're talking about up to two hours before yeah. the first race. When I was there before, more than two hours before the first at Werribee. You could have walked, you could have gone out there and walked it, plenty took advantage of it. So the cricket analogy is just singly the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The other thing that I find completely ridiculous is, is this industry accreditation stuff. Now, there's not too many people that have been to more race meetings in the last 12 months than me. I reckon in that time, I reckon I've been asked to show my accreditation maybe three or four times. I can get in, I got into the chairman's club and the committee room here at Flemington and no one checked my accredita accreditation. So that's just something to hide behind. Sam Highland got sucked in trying to protect the track manager down there. The track manager, I don't know whether it was his decision or whether it was a miscommunication or what, but you look like a deal down there, Paul Downs. Seriously. You should have just, I know, I know I'm half going into bat for pots and everyone's expected to, expects me to, but it's just silly. I mean... The main thing is, Juppie, that next time I turn up at Werribee, that I just go and walk the track and there's no dramas, you know? And I don't yeah, really, right. I shouldn't need an accreditation to do it. The reason I don't, I mean, I could get an accreditation. Like, it's not, mm. that's not the problem. The problem is, any punter that turns up at a track at a reasonable amount, mm. of the day before or the morning of a race meeting, and they want to go out and have a look on the track, that should be encouraged. Mm, so absolutely. You should, we shouldn't be saying, oh, Potts, you can come on because you've got an accreditation, but Matt, you're barred because you don't. Yeah. That's, we don't want that. And again, on uh, Monday, I think it was, on Racing Ahead, they had the Werribee CEO come on and he mentioned the accreditation and he, he wasn't even sure that you needed accreditation. There was yeah. uncertainty around it. And again, it probably needs to be a, a, an industry-wide directive. So these guys on course and, and the CEOs and the track manager that understand that, yep, we allow track managers on and we encourage it because at the end of the day, it's encouraging wagering turnover. And, and, and encouraging well, confidence. And well, I mean, I'll just go with the evidence. I mean, Pakenham, Werribee, mm, yep. Flemington, Mooney Valley, Caulfield, Sandown, Ballarat, everywhere I've been, they encouraged that, that they were absolutely happy for me to be walking mm. around. So. Well, I've done it at all level spots. Mm. I walked Dunkel. Yeah. And the committee came back and asked me what I thought of it. I said, well, all you've all you've done, you've kept the grass nice along, there's plenty of cushion there for it. Oh, beautiful, you're happy. Yeah. That's, and it doesn't matter whether it's just a community-based volunteer group like that, all the way up to the what the city blokes have at their disposal. I mean... That's a really good point, Choppy. Nearly every time I walk a track, whether it be the, the track manager or some of the administration yep. stuff, someone will come out and have a chat to you and say, what do you think? Yeah. Mm. You know, they really want some feedback on their track. And they want... Honestly, so if there is a problem, they, they want to know about that. And, um, so, but generally, in Victoria, the tracks are presented in terrific order. Mm. The track staff in, in doing what is a very difficult job, yeah. you know, I'll do tremendous work. We've got great tracks. And, um, um, yeah, so I, I mean, there was one issue. I don't think, we, you know, we need to sort of... I don't want to flog it too much because I think it was just a one-off issue. I don't think it's going to be a problem in the future. So. Yeah. Well, the only thing, like... 
the only question that I've got in the back of my mind coming out of the whole thing is, and as you said, mate, were they trying to hide something? Because that track looked off to me. And I'll, 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 I'll say firsthand, I was at Tatura, I kept a bit of an eye on them, but it just appeared that there was a, a, a definite pattern there. It was just a summer track, Juppie, where the, True. the inside... So, I mean, I, again, this is because I didn't walk the track. Yeah, you don't know. Well, I can tell you exactly what the circumstances were at Mornington yesterday. And there's another meeting at Mornington next week. And if they move the rail out, I'll tell you what will happen there too. Because right? I can understand that, that what's mm. behind and it and what's making it happen. Now, I'm assuming... So I'll make some assumptions here because with Werribee, I don't know the answer. Mm. I'm assuming they have a boom irrigator. Okay. I'm assuming that track to me, just watching on TV, looks about 20 metres wide. Yeah, that's about okay. right. Yeah. So I'm assuming the irrigator would probably go around from about the seven metres to the 11 metres. Yep. Okay. So which compacts that part of the track. They've moved the rail out five. Yeah. Um, it's summer track. It's summer racing. So it, there was probably something in that irrigation lane area that was preventing horses making up ground in it. I think. Because you really needed to be in the three lanes inside it. So, but there might not even be an irrigation lane there. I'm guessing. So that's the problem. That's the problem with not letting people like me walk those tracks because yeah. you don't know exactly. There was an obvious leader bias there, right? Yeah. And you're better off being on the fence. But why exactly? We don't know because you wanted to play little games. There's just two points on that, and and um, obviously the media made much of the bias at Werribee. But um, you look at the results. There was mainly favourites who won the race, yeah. races. Yeah, there, there were, were horses horse. in the market, and Werribee is traditionally attracted favours on paces. It has for a very long period of time. I mean, Werribee Cup Day last year it was the same. You couldn't make ground. Um, so I think it's a bit more to be expected than, than anything else, and you know, the, arguably the best horse has won. The second point... Um, I would agree to, with that, actually. Yeah. I agree with that. I think you know, they, they ran pretty true there last mm. week. So, yeah. The second point I want to make, just for the listeners who you know, can't understand the benefit that, that Potts can provide to his subscribers when he walks the track, I've been listening to you know, his recent reports and taking note, note of what he's commented on the tracks, and the, the information he provides is, is spot on. You know, the tracks have been playing exactly as, as Potts will suggest prior to race day. And, and, you know, it's such a huge asset for a punter to have going into a race day, understanding, you know, which lanes are going to be advantaged, where horses need to be to win. And, and anyone thinking that, you know, Potts is just striding out, having a stroll and not actually um, coming back with extremely valuable information is misguided and, and um, you know it's it's really important for the people who pay for his information and for the industry at large to have that sort of um, unbiased uh, and and well considered opinions on tracks. Yeah you thanks know. Matt. I mean I do it because I want to find an edge for my own betting but I also have subscribers and I'm happy happy to provide that information to them. We've posted a lot of that information free on the website. I usually keep some of the key information that may or may not play out mm. kept back for our subscribers but i think that's fair enough i don't think everyone should expect that we post every all of my thoughts on the track just free on the website but um i did last week because we put out some accidental misinformation on thursday mm. and when i come back on friday it sort of changed so i thought it was only fair that we correct the, the record yeah. so i just want to say to the um to all of our viewers and people that are listening about the, the track walking situation not only does it help you pre-race we're trying to identify what the patterns yeah. might be. But in that situation, you're trying to predict what the jockeys will do, right? Which is yeah. not always easy. But in the post-race, it is particularly helpful. Yeah. Okay, if you've seen horses that have got to a fast lane that would, was completely impossible to predict, let's say Oral Spirit last yeah. week because it hung into a... Oh. All right, I know why that horse really found a length or two over the last 100 metres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know exactly why. But I don't think you would know exactly why if you hadn't walked the track. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. so I'm saying in, in your post-race assessment, walking the track is a real aid. It's more of an aid than, than the pre-race, to be quite honest. Yeah. And it allows you to assess those races really accurately. Yeah. So like at yeah. Ballarat last yeah. month, I knew exactly what had happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, it was a real, I had a mental picture that not many people would have had because I knew at the point of the turn at the 400, mm. the horses at the front of the map and on the inside were hitting a firm part of the track. Before, yeah. of, it's almost like if you watch car racing, you see them come into a, a slow turn, yeah. right? At the, at the end of a straight. Yeah. There might be like 100 metres between them. And then as the front car breaks, the other one comes right up its bum. And then but they then, come, then, 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 then the other one again. off it goes yeah. on yeah. the acceleration out of the turn. 
Well, that was what was happening at Ballarat. Yeah. The, the horses at the front of the map on the inside were accelerating out of that turn, yeah. and it was giving them like a two length advantage. So when I'm reviewing that meeting, having walked the track really helps me. So mm. that's that's again one of the reasons why I, I like doing it. I only do it because I need the fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. um, boys, I had another, uh, as I said, I went to Tatura on uh, Sunday, and I went up there and worked for a friend of the show, Jonathan Walsh. Uh, he'd done the form and sort of done his speed maps, and then there was a particular runner that caught our eye. Um, I haven't, I haven't had time. I haven't checked the stewards report yet. Um, but we had parcel going forward, and um, I viewers, we've given you a bit of homework over the last couple of weeks, so here's a little bit more. Go and have a look at Tatura Race Four from Sunday, and um, these I've tipped these guys off. They've both had a look. And um, what sort of followed um, heartened me a little bit as someone who'd backed it. Like, as I said last week about the Douglas White thing, I see he's accepted his month suspension. It means absolutely jack shit to me because I've, I've still done my money. They're not going to go in retrospectively there. It's something we have been talking about where if... He's essentially cop copped a month for making a blue, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. this is why we need to bring this Which sort seems, of incompetent seems, charge... It seems yeah. fair. That, that's, yeah. that seems like a fair because what he did wasn't. It was just a minor mistake. You know what I mean? Like a, with a big, big ramifications potentially. Yeah. Well, all I want to see now, Pots, is that use that as a precedent. Now, yeah. if yeah. someone makes a bad blue, give him a couple of weeks. Yeah. Because, like, I'm not having to go down and get you. I haven't. Give him the option. You can either have a couple of weeks off. Or you can refund all the punters that did their day the money. <laughs> there you go, Dougie. Look, we'll find every punter in Australia that packed that horse, and if you want to refund them, you can go back to riding straight I'm, away. I'm tipping Dougie's one of the few few he jockeys might have around he might have that, that well. probably <laughs> could settle it all out. Um, but what happened with if you go and have a look at the run parcel? We had Matt leading. He sort of half missed the kick, um, so he sort of length a length off him, and then he had the opportunity to um, kick up, but instead of doing that, he restrained the horse. It looked a very odd ride to us so um, we grabbed uh, one of the stewards there on track and we said look we've just got a couple of questions uh, A where did you guys have it mapped um, and like are there going to be any further questions because we had it mapped going forward and it restrained and that, and this was not long this would have been within a couple of minutes of the race finishing mm. and a couple of minutes after that the steward came back and said look yeah the hub had picked it up so the guys in the analysis room had had seen it because it, w it was in the market. I think it was either favourite or equal favourite. So they'd seen it and they said, yeah, we're looking into him. And they, and they kept um, Darren in the room. And like, it's, it's no pot on Darren. Like, he's like, you're not going to find too many more experienced jockeys than Darren Gauchy. No. But it just it looked, especially once you then go and get the confirmation that they had it mapped similarly to what, what we did. And then since then, I've spoken to a couple of other blokes who said, yeah, well, it's it normally up on the speed. But as you said, Potts, there was a heap of speed in that race. But it, it was just good to know that they were picking up on things that we were picking up on as well. So that gave us a little bit of uh, a little bit of heart to know that, yeah, they are they are watching. It might not all go into the stewards report, hmm. but at least we know that they are sort of there. That's the important the issue, out. Juppie. That's what we've discussed a number of times yeah. on the show. The... the, the, the Individual players in those situations, like the one we discussed last week with Benalla and stuff like yeah. that, need to know that if they you know, don't show show every bit of urgency required, yep. that the stewards will be all over them and asking them all sorts of hard questions, and then and you know if it then translates into betting, you know it could blow up into a real problem for yep. them. Right? Then they sort of in a way need to be. A bit like when I was a kid, I was scared of the coppers, right? You know what I mean? Like the yeah. problem with the society these days, the kids aren't scared of the coppers, right? But, but well, I was. So mm. I'm saying jockeys and all the various players need to be a bit scared of the yeah, authorities. Yeah. I, th I think that's a that's healthy yeah. for the industry. So I looked at that race Juppie's talking about after it, right? I mean, Juppie brought it to my attention because I wasn't involved with the Tatura on Sunday. Well, you still had steam coming out of your ears from, <laughs> yeah. from where? Yeah. I had a look at that situation and. Um, Parcel, first of all, I'll say I know the Parcel particularly well, yep. right, from when she had a very first start. She's a very fickle little mare. She's fast, but she's fickle. Um, the natural map in that race, given her last half dozen starts, was her sort of holding her position on the fence with two horses driving her across from outside her. 
and she would have had to push particularly hard to hold them out, right? But that might have been possible, but it's probably more likely that the two wide draws are going to cross up. Okay, that's just before the jump. Then they jump and she misses at half a length. Okay, Gauchi does show urgency for yeah, two strides. For two strides or three strides, he shows urgency. And then it's look, to me, it looks like he's decided, well, I'm not going to hold them out. I'm not going to hold that position, so I'm just going to revert to plan B or C, which is just a cold ride and see what happens. And then it sort of just all went wrong and it never opened up for him. And he sort of coasted the line. But he did restrain her after he yeah, went. Yeah, no, he fought it. Yeah. Like it's, but I, I think it's just a case of him going to plan B and that not working either, you know what yeah. I mean? Like that's my reading of it. So like, so everyone's going to look at these things and have an opinion. But I'm saying the point is that it's the job of the, the, the integrity department of stewards to go, right, this has happened. Is there a problem here? Do we need to look at the betting? Who did this? What, you know, are there any patterns? Who, who's laying these horses, you know, blah, blah, blah. And more often than not, they'll go, well, it's all okay. It's yeah. fine. Well, and you just just, but occasionally, like the ones that really bother me when there are really dramatic tactical things and issues with the way horses are ridden and it shows up in betting pre-race, they're, yeah. they're the ones that I think the linkage should happen and they really should get to the bottom of it. I mean, there's no doubt you're right with your map on pass. I mean, mm. she's yeah. normally going to settle in the first two or three you know, as long as she jumps cleanly, she's missed at half a length. The option did look like it was there to drive up on the inside so, yeah. with some aggressive riding. Um, you know, it, I think it's great that they've yeah. acknowledged that you've yeah. brought it to their attention, they've looked into it. And, you know, if, if someone goes to that Datura Stewart's report and they go and watch the replay, hopefully there's a note in there saying, you know, we did look at that and yeah. we analysed it and there was no betting to suggest anything untoward and, and for that reason it was let slide or, or whatever they decide. And can I say to Walshie, if DK was here, he'd be, DK would be just screaming at the, t at the screen right now. The perils of backing these type of horses from yeah, the inside, inside draw, draw. Walshie. Yeah. I'll be very careful. I mean, I've fallen there myself. I went fell into internship the other day. I think the, I think the other thing is that all the viewers and, like, let's face it, we are for the punters and the, the punters are watching it. If you do see something that either sort of you didn't anticipate happening or something don't be afraid to fire off an email mm. or tweet to their at rv stewards just fire it in they're really accommodating mm. and um and they're, and they're really helpful so don't be afraid to do that and, well, and that's not, not just you in victoria you just you can send them all to Dolph. so he loves it <laughs> <laughs> so jack we got a really we had a great email from one of our you know long time followers really sharp guy we can only refer to him as benicio on this thing so we, we should come back in part two and have a good discussion of um this great email that benicio sent into us we shall certainly do that pot so we'll be back in a moment with part two